we'll continue with exposure control and depth of field so I have a different scene here where I have a, a simple model latent on an HDR but you can see that my uh, back plate is supposed to be white if, you, if I check the material of this back plate it's a completely white material this is the ground material which is pure white but still what I would see is uh, the exposure uh, is not correct I can see a little reddish tint so first I'll try to change my white balance to neutral which may make my uh, image uh, more whitish you can see that uh, okay you can see that I have uh, a neutral uh, image now uh, rather than an image with a little red cast so basically this is what I can do with the white balance I may even put a cast on it like say I would say temperature say uh, if my temperature is uh, 2000 it's it's basically what I would get an image is a very bluish tinted image where uh, it will try to cancel the amount of red which is over there and what would I get as an image which has a bluish tint as of my even my light doesn't have much tint it is almost neutral so uh, this is just to explain how this white balance works how it tries to cancel the colors and how it works so if I have an image something like if I have a value like something like 12 how say uh, 9000 what it is a bluish color so what it would try to do is it would try to remove blue by adding more of orangish so what you would get is an image which has very uh, much of orange cast and what normally we would try in ideal cases is that we would try to cancel it and if it's 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 neutral as of now the the light is neutral so I would keep it in neutral so I have uh, an image which has almost everything as white and this is not that bright it's little dull even still the white is not white it's little grayish so I can say it's not purely white so what would I do is I would say just say that my F number I would say lower to 5 so I think I'll be able to see an image a little more brighter which is uh, it's as of now a little underexposed so I'm just saying my F number is 5 so I think I can see a fairly brighter image starting to render a little time that's fine mm, so without changing the light parameters if I have more uh, so many lights to control it is easy to control the overall illumination of the scene just by controlling my exposure control rather than going and tweaking each light and it, it may be a little difficult to do that way but it's a perfect way that I can directly control using my exposure control so right now I think I have a perfectly um, illuminated scene with pure whites and uh, properly exposed scene so uh, okay I think just let it render Uh, so you can see here photographic or from V-Ray camera so basically this disables mutes these properties and directly picks it up from the camera so I'm not using a V-Ray camera I'm using a normal camera for this situation so I'm not using that and EV parameter see people who are not familiar with cameras it is it is easy to directly control on EV or exposure control it's one attribute which either increases or decreases the exposure so uh, so I uh, regularly don't use that function I try to use this photographic exposure as I told I have little other advantages that's what we are coming to it depth of field so we would uh, close this scene and open an another scene to ex uh, at the previous scene to uh, talk about uh, depth of field so what is depth of field is depth of field is nothing but the selective focus I would be able to select a certain part of an image um, like I can focus as the render as this render you have seen I have that scene here I will try to share that scene so uh, this is I have created some grasses using uh, I have that I'll just open that scene itself no df2 
scene where I have some I have some grass using multi scatter I have used this plugin of 3ds max to create these grasses I have one sample grass here I'm just basically uh, populating those grasses over this surface so it is it's I'm not using the scene is because basically a little time taking to render or I would do is I'll just switch off my uh, this so multi scatter so I have the scene so I would select the camera so it's a V-Ray camera this time we are using a V-Ray camera so V-Ray physical camera so and I have enabled something called depth of field so you can find on a V-Ray camera the this dialog box that is depth of field so we were talking about uh, selective focus or depth of field so uh, depth of field is a uh, technique where we use to get uh, focus on a particular object and that can be uh, a good technique for photography as well as it's very good for even for our 3D artists that you can focus on the main attention uh, rather than uh, that a lot of you can avoid the distracting elements by focusing on the main object and blurring the rest of the environment so we can uh, do this in post but it is you can even do inside my 3ds max and so that is what we are uh, talking about how in V-Ray we can uh, develop something like selective focus that you can focus a range of a part of an image and rest can be on uh, defocused and we can even get these kind of effects these called bokehs so even we can create bokeh effects inside uh, uh, inside V-Ray so uh, let us see how we can do that so this is a scene and that we were talking about so uh, I have a couple of uh, pool balls on a grass it's, it's a little odd that's fine so uh, I have depth of field the first thing that you have to do is just enable the depth of field I'll just go to the render settings and make, sh make sure that I have a small renders okay I'm rendering something very small and uh, yeah uh, say let us render this with a disabled depth of field so as normal I get everything proper I, I have sharp focus from here to there everything is focused let us just enable the depth of field and render it once again and one more thing when I'm using uh, depth of field is that I should make sure that I'm using uh, say I'll enable my depth of field here and uh, make sure that my uh, um, make sure one thing is I'm rendering in the camera which is really camera that you should make sure that you're uh, not rendering in perspective because there is no change here so render in very camera okay and render it once again uh, taking a little time because now my depth of field is on and and I have an exposure control enabled so I'm getting a little more brighter images than before So you can start to see these steps are blurred and these area is focused. You can see that these grass parts are uh, blurred and this area is pretty much focused. And if I disable this and just make a copy of it and I render once again just to see the difference. So uh, it's obviously takes an extra time to render uh, to blur this scene so you can see that uh, the difference. This is uh, uh, without uh, depth of field and this is with depth of field so okay so this is the button that we can enable depth of field and this basically de determines the quality of the depth of field that you are creating and so uh, or quality of the blur blurriness that you are creating and one more very important thing before we were uh, speaking about that was what is the difference if I adjust F number and shutter speed I have shutter speed somewhere here so right now my F number is 1 that means as we have discussed uh, in the previous uh, chart that if I have uh, an F number of something like 2 1 is very strange on real life cameras so um, if something is it's bigger and F, F1 or 2 is very big and the, these are smaller so the bigger the aperture opening is I would get very shallow depth of field. Shallow means I have a very little area on the focus and rest are defocused. So consider if I increase the F number. 
something like I'm giving a value like 5 or something uh, just again um, I should copy this okay that's already a cloned window that's not a problem so uh, I, I have changed my exposure control here I have changed my uh, F number to 5 so obviously when I I'll get a darker image because I am reducing the num amount of light that can enter so you can you can compensate that with uh, reducing the uh, shutter speed so what now I get is I'm um, now I still will have depth of field but my depth of field will affect lesser areas okay now I have uh, you can see that almost everything is focused if I say value 1 and uh, this was 100 I guess before so a value of 1 is a very shallow depth of shallow depth of field that means a very small area is under focus rest everything is defocused and again I need to make sure that it's can render so you can see that this is blurred in these areas uh, when I have a smaller uh, aperture uh, smaller aperture values blur is less when we have a bigger opening uh, in the lens I have uh, higher number of depth of field so consider if I'm reducing it further less something like 0.2 and obviously when I have a 0.2 value what happens is I get an image which is uh, very bright I will get an image which is fairly bright so what I have to do is by that time if I get an image which is that bright what would I do is I would just increase the shutter speed something like 300 so what I can compensate that brightness but uh, the difference will be I'll have a very shallow depth of field. I'll have a very little area focused. Rest the entire area will be blurred. Um, I think it's still brighter. So I may just go for 400 or 450. So what I'm expecting to see is I'll have only this area wherever the, uh, the exact focal point is will be focused and rest of the areas will be completely hazy and blurry. You can see that my blur is far more higher than comparing to this picture so how come it become more blurry it's because I didn't I don't have a button to increase or I don't have a direct parameter that I can increase my depth of field the parameter to increase my depth of field is is my F number bigger my opening that is smaller the value is higher the blur amount is now I have uh, almost everything blurred and only very small area here I can see that I have my focus area is pretty much bigger but here the plane is very small so lower this F number so what is the difference while I'm changing shutter speed and approach the major thing will be on depth of field when you're working with depth of field you should be careful which value you are changing either shutter speed or exposure or F number if F number if you're changing it a, uh, lower the F numbers you will get shallow with the depth, shallow depth of fields and if you wanted to have a shallow depth of field you should control on F number and compensate with shutter speed and so same like if you want looking for a motion blur uh, you need to lower the uh, shutter speed so a lower shutter speed you can get uh, uh, something like uh, uh, if you have tried to take a picture in the night what you get is you get those trails so the trails are because because I'm opening my lens for a longer time to get light into uh, the scene because it's fairly darker so uh, to this get the same effect in 3ds max you will also have to do the same thing what in real life you would be doing so the my original scene that is uh, this I had a little more grasses and all those things so that makes it a little more interesting um, that I have a little more detail to see nothing but uh, if I render this I have a little more uh, details in terms of grasses so it takes a little time to uh, render because of uh, heavy geometries so you, these are all uh, grasses using multi scatter we would talk on another session how to uh, create these kind of grasses using multi scatter one second let it render so our basic ideas were to uh, talk on uh, exposure that's I would uh, I'll, I have bookmarked that particular uh, site where camera demo go back to this and 
so you can see this render with uh, grass will be more interesting so if I can add some grasses and still work on depth of field and so it will be really interesting that you can focus and you can do a little prose production uh, on the top of it mm, so I have the completed render over here and still that's not on a final quality but still I have uh, something rented over here and uh, the quality of the depth of field that also you can control I think this gives you pretty much idea I'm not rendering it completely so um, you select the camera make sure that you are using V-Ray camera for this the subdivision that is sampling subdivision of depth of field if you increase it higher you are getting a better quality blur here so that would really give you to that and you can try some um, try either if you have a DSLR camera you can try how the exposure and shutter speed works in real life and that that, that is what the real understanding you need it or you can try some uh, demo something like this which I found online you just search for a camera demo how it works so you can try something like this thank you